for the Delta Mathic topic of center and spread visually, it really helps to have a visual. That's why we try to make graphs and do things that help us to make sense of the numbers around us. Based on the two data sets represented below, complete the following sentences. So we're comparing data set P with data set Q. So you can get, excuse me, I'm making myself yawn. Okay, data set P, you can get a quick visual and a quick sense of what's happening compared to data set Q. Looks like we have like a little bit more like gaps in here. Um, it's it's like the the numbers are a little bit lower generally um, than we see in data set P. And there's some differences and we can get really nitpicky, okay? And be very precise or we can make some quick assessments of what's happening. So it might be worth your time to try it quickly, but it says the center of data set P, so the center is the median, okay? Um, is comp how, compares how to data set Q. And the spread of data P set is compared to data Q how. So the, the center is the median. So you list all the numbers out and you find the middle number or you count how many there are, okay? And you say, okay, well, if there's 20 numbers represented, I'm gonna be looking at like the 10th and 11th number, okay? Because those are the middle two. Um, if there's like 31 or yeah, 31 numbers, I'd look at like 16th number. So you don't have to like necessarily write them all out, but also you get a quick visual most of the time. So the center of data set P, it looks like it's higher than it is in data set Q. Like I would assume that this median is a little bit higher of a number, it's like 80, 81, 82, and so on. And down here, it might be in like upper 70s, okay? So, um, and then the spread, so like how, what's your range from your biggest to your lowest? Like how much, how are, how are we talking here? Well, this set of, um, this set of numbers is a little bit more narrow than this one. This one goes out a little wider. It's got a couple outliers. It looks like almost even right there. Okay, so the answer to that one, and they explain it. They give you a nice little explanation, but can feel like kind of a lot. They're talking about how you find the center of that median. Okay, and then they show you, they circle those numbers. Aren't they so nice? They compare them precisely for each set. The median would have been 82 for the first one and 79 for the second one, okay? So it says the median is greater, okay, for the first set data P, data set P than it is for Q, okay? And then just compare the spreads, kind of like I told you already, you're looking at that, that range, okay? The highest minus the, um, the lowest, and I really, I should have said too, we're talking quartiles there. So you find you find the median of the lower half and the median of the upper half, and you compare that range there, that inner quartile range, okay? And it's 83 minus 79. So you're looking at the space between those versus the space between these. But if you wanted a quick guess, sorry, space between these, a quick guess, you can get a quick visual because um, doing the work is, is a little bit more involved because whenever you want to find that inner quartile range, that there's the range and there's the inner quartile range. So remember, inner quartile range means I list all my numbers in order, I find the median, and then I find the median of the lower half and the upper half. And so that's quartile one and three, and you're spread, you're seeing what that spread is inside that group of numbers as well. All right, yes, okay, and that was it. All right, good luck on that one.